Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to the close-up camera, and also welcome back to Crossroad TCG. This time, I've got kind of an interesting discussion video for us today. It's something I've been thinking about a lot lately, and it has to do with like the longevity of the Dragon Ball Super card game, and a way that I think that we can live for a long, long time and stay stay on top of the card game scene, and also remain a healthy community that a lot of people want to take part in. Because honestly, guys, I'm gonna get more into this in a little bit, but the Dragon Ball community has been the best thing I've been a part of in a long, long time. I just I've never had such a welcoming group of people i've never just enjoyed my hobby so much i've never just enjoyed going to events like the best part of traveling to these events for me like the tournament is almost secondary in a lot of cases and that might sound weird to hear from a competitive player on a competitive team but just seeing my friends and picking where we're going to go out afterward and just getting to see these guys that i only see once every month or once every few months is like just really one of the best parts of this game and i want it to stay like that for a long time and i kind of i kind of have an idea and that's kind of where the title of the video comes from is uh, how we can keep Dragon Ball Super with low toxicity because honestly there there is no way to remove all toxicity it is it, we're, we're part of an online forum there's no way you know we're on YouTube we're on Facebook we're on Twitch we're on all these things and there's no way that there's gonna be no toxicity because of course internet trolls just exist that's fine and sometimes they're funny you know I sometimes sometimes I do read a comment and I think it's hilarious and I laugh at it sometimes it is very annoying it is a little bit offensive but with that being the case I think that this game has some of the lowest toxicity of any gaming scene that I've ever been a part of or ever been in and I've been a part of a few uh, video gaming scenes and I've been a part of a few TCG scenes uh, just from a little bit of backstory uh, before we get into the backstory actually I've heard a few things about the magic magic the gathering scene and I had I really have spent no time in the competitive scene of magic I've never spent any time in the forums I've never spent any time in the online so this is a disclaimer this is all hearsay but I do hear that you know a lot of the a lot of the base of magic is a little bit of toxic and a little bit elitist now I think that comes with a scene that when a scene is just that big and people have been playing the card games for so long and the game is 20 years old maybe that makes more sense maybe maybe people will view that more as the best game to ever exist because it's been uh, around for so long I've heard it referred to as the game that the best game around run by the worst people so maybe that has another reason to do why, with why it's toxic maybe that's to do with why people are elitist with the game and think it's so good uh, maybe because the cards are so highly priced but that's just what I've heard about Magic. I can't really talk to Pokemon. I can't really talk to uh, Vanguard. I can't really talk to Force of Will. But I can talk a lot to Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'm going to go back into my backstory with Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit. You guys might have heard this a bit on other podcasts I've been on. You might have heard this um, in other videos. I've, I've talked about this in articles I've written. But uh, long story short, before I got into Dragon Ball Super, before Dragon Ball Super was even a game, I spent four years in the competitive uh, Yu-Gi-Oh scene. Pretty much my entire college career. I'm in my fourth year of college now. And I spent pretty much my entire college scene as a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player until I picked up Dragon Ball Super. Uh, with that being said, you know, I got into the local scene here in Boston. I met a lot of great people. A lot of my friends that I still have now that some of them play Dragon Ball, some of them don't play card games anymore. Some of them just still play Yu-Gi-Oh. And I met them through, through Yu-Gi-Oh. And, and for that, I will forever be grateful to that game. Uh, because I think when you meet people in real life and at a local a local game store, you have you can definitely actually get to know people, and even people who are online trolls sometimes are really nice in person or really cool in person. But yeah, of course the people at your local scene are going to be usually friendly with you, and you're usually going to make friends with your local scene as long as you're somewhat outgoing. But I, okay, so getting into the rest of it, uh, even traveling to events for Yu-Gi-Oh, I never really got clicked in with the community that much a lot of times it was very clicky you know people that travel together really didn't mingle with too many other people uh we really only talked to people from boston when we would go to when we go to events in like rhode island connecticut maine what have you we would only really communicate with people in our own group and that was how kind of everyone acted uh a lot of times when i played against opponents they Sometimes we're really friendly, sometimes we're really cool, but a lot of times they were very, very, very try hard. And of course, you know, it's a competitive game. You're playing, you're paying money to travel, you're paying money to enter the event. But, uh, you know, you can be a decent human being and sit across from your opponent and have a conversation and, you know, have a good time. Right. I, I don't see the I don't see the need for absolute closed mouth uh, gameplay with just pointing at cards and not really being very communic communicative with your opponent. I don't really see the need for that. And uh, yeah, that was, you know, being in the Dragon Ball Super scene for basically a year and some change now, I've made probably no exaggeration, no lie. I've probably made 50 times the number of friends I've made since playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's so amazing. That's one of the reasons that to me, Dragon Ball is one of the best hobbies I've ever been a part of. One of the best 
of communities I've ever been a part of. And if you ask anyone, if you ask any of the top players, if you ask any of the people that have met some of the top players, if you ask people that got back into card gaming after not playing for a few years because they took a hiatus from Yu-Gi-Oh, took a hiatus from Magic and got back into Dragon Ball, you'll hear the same thing over and over again. I hear this all the time. Like I never really hear bad things about the Dragon Ball community. And we've had our run-ins with certain people in the community being dramatic. We've had our run-ins with internet trolls. We've had our run-ins with toxic posting on the Facebook group. But overall, I think the experience for most players has been really, really, really positive, and I want it to stay that way. And even and back to the Yu-Gi-Oh thing real quick, the community in Yu-Gi-Oh, Zodiac Duelist, many of you come from Yu-Gi-Oh that watch the channel, I'm sure, and I'm sure you guys know what Zodiac Duelist is. Zodiac Duelist is their equivalent to our Dragon Ball Facebook group, and it's pretty toxic. Like, I don't know, I scroll through Zodiac once in a while because I do find it funny. People do crap posts, people do post memes, people do make fun of things, and sometimes it's funny, but there's no real discussion. There's no real Yu-Gi-Oh discussion, and um, I think that's somewhat of a problem because I do think there needs to be some places um, that pretty much everyone in the community can get together and discuss things you know i have the channel discord a lot of other channels like android and eggman they have their discord and a lot of other people have their own facebook groups but i really like the fact that we have a dragon ball super community page on facebook that is for everyone and a lot of times there are real discussions there and i really really appreciate that about our community that's one of the other great things about this community so i'm finally gonna get to the idea of how i think uh we can remain on top in terms of very low numbers of toxicity and this is going to become a little bit of appreciation video and that's totally okay i think that these people deserve this appreciation so um i'm going to basically put it out there so the way that i think we can remain low toxicity in the card gaming slash gaming scene in general is by almost keeping the people who are on top on top or at least encouraging the people who are on top in the game to be this way so when i think of the people that are on top in the dragon Ball super card game i think of a few people immediately i think of my team owner and team captain marcus cantarsi i think about danny hype i think about danny win i think about uh, marcel russell i think about peter katani and those are just five names that come to mind uh and there's tons more richard zapp pat o'neill trey faircloth there's tons of people in this game that are on top right now in terms of the competitive scene, in terms of the content creation scene, in terms of the community building scene. And these people are all just like really positive people. They're really, they they communicate with the community. They create content for us. They uh, cover events, they go to events, they win, they do well, they do all these things. And at the same time, they're genuinely good people. Like I know a lot of them personally. I know that a lot of them really want the best for this game, really want the best for this community. And that's one thing that I feel like these other games are kind of missing. Again, I can't really talk to Magic but I can talk to Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's no reason for me to name names of Yu-Gi-Oh! players that I've met or Yu-Gi-Oh! players that I know of. But what I will say is that a lot of players that win often in that community, they're not very vocal with the community. They're not uh, making a lot of content. Usually the content is made of them by other channels, which is which is fine. You know, I do the same thing. I get deck profiles from big profile players and I do the same thing. I try my best to be a, a, a player and a content creator that carries myself well and um, doesn't get involved in drama and makes this game, you know, have a good representation or a good uh, re reputation. I hope I do a good job of that. Um, I really, really do. But as far as other people I mentioned, I know that they do an amazing job of that. They're just, they're very vocal with the community. They talk a lot. They're positive. They show this game in, in the right light. Uh, we don't have really a whole lot of drama. You know, once in a while, we'll have a spark on Facebook. But realistically, um, there's not that much there's not that much toxicity in the, in the in the forums which i'm really really happy about and i do think that the community has a lot of good role models to bounce off of uh in the forms of like what i said danny height marcus cantarsi chris welch pat o'neill richard zapp i think that this community has a lot of really strong pillars and um as a dragon ball super player as a content creator and as a player who uh who really enjoys playing this game i'm really happy that we have all these people and and there's other people i should shout out to you know android eggman uh adrian from no counters no combos these guys are other great content creators and there's a ton more out there and i can't name you all and i'm really sorry please don't get mad at me if i'm not naming your name right now because there's there's too many people that's that's the beauty of it right there's too many great people to name in this game for me to name all of them and that's one of the other reasons i think this community is just so so positive and so popular and so good and strong i really really think that we're on the right track with this game and uh, maybe what I said before about keeping those players on top wasn't exactly how I meant to say it, but I think we should really encourage 
the, the players who are on top, you know, whether that changes or whether it stays the same, we should encourage those players who are on top to remain positive, remain good role models. I think I think being a, a content creator, especially, but I also think being a top a top tier player should come with some type of responsibility to be a role model to the community. You know, I do think that that's really important. I do think that's what's going to help us remain uh, low levels of toxicity. So I know it's a little bit of a weird video today. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally post, but uh, it was something I've been thinking about for a long time. And I've been having this discussion with people that are close to me, especially in this game, people that are close to me. And uh, to me, it makes sense. You know, I think that we should hold our, our top tier players and our content creators to a high standard. And uh, I think that that will actually really benefit the community as a whole. And, and uh, you know, if the people that lead the community are not toxic, I think the community uh, will not be toxic. TLDR, guys, that's pretty much the whole video summed up in five seconds. But um, yeah, I mean, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, yeah, again, a little bit of a weird video, but something I've been thinking about. I kind of wanted to get it off my chest. So hopefully you guys react positively to this. Uh, but yeah, let me know your comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. You actually sat through all of that and made it to the end. I don't know how you did it, but now that you're here, you, you might as well hit the subscribe button that's right above me or maybe check out some of these other videos. I don't know. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. I really don't know how you did it, but good on you.